If you've ever wanted to recone a subwoofer, this is the video for you. I recently caught up with Brian Chamberlain from Sundown Audio at Knowledge Fest in Nashville, Tennessee. Let's head inside the Music City Center and learn how to recone a subwoofer. All right, you ready to do this? All right, so when you were you were asking earlier about sanding the landings, usually like if somebody uses the E6000 or an epoxy on this on the surround landing, it's not going to smell bad. It's just a, you know, you just take your grinder and grind it off. But the spider landing is almost always <coughs> going to be CA glue and this stuff is super toxic so what I do I will set up a chair and a little podium and put a I'll put my lazy Susan on there and I'll have a fan literally right here so that fan is blowing it away from me immediately otherwise it's, it's gonna, bad it's it's bad use a respirator and put your goggles on and all that stuff try to get that stuff away from you do not do it indoors it is you're gonna kill everybody in that building all right you want to make sure the dust cap fits on there properly and it's the right one because we do make multiple dust caps and one thing you could do to prep for your recon kit is when you're when you get your dust cap it's going to be smooth here you want to just scuff it up sandpaper um, I forgot to bring the sandpaper today, so I ended up just taking my knife and just scraped it, scraped an edge. You want something that the glue is going to bite into. What's that? Concrete. <laughs> yeah. That works well, man. Just, yeah. yeah, that'll work just fine. So you want to scuff that up before you, because when you're doing this and you're, you're getting in your, in your rhythm, you may forget to scuff that up. And even though we're going to use E6000, which is a damn good glue for dust caps, sometimes if you have enough pressure, enough pressure build up, it may still pop the dust cap off. So it's important that you do that. So I got some glues on the table. Today we're going to use CA glue, which I only use on the spider. And then I've got E6000, which I'm going to use on the surround and the dust cap. We at sundown, often you'll find us using epoxy. We may use epoxy on the surround and the dust cap. We usually don't use it on a spider because what we find is epoxy usually doesn't hold as good as CA glue does. And that spider has got more movement and more pressure, or however you want to call it. There's more movement there and it's stiffer and it's trying to pull every time. So CA glue is the best. You want to make sure that your surround landing and your spider, what's up? Is there a specific type of like the rubberized CA glue or just regular CA glue? So we get ours made for us <laughs> and we generally don't sell it because it's, it's hazmat to ship this stuff. But there's a couple good companies and I'm, I'm glad you asked. Starbond is a pretty good company. I think it's, they call it medium thickness or medium viscosity, heavy duty bond or something like that. You don't have to get the black stuff, but might as well. Black always looks better on the speaker. But you want to find like the strongest stuff. The rubberized. Is that usually, like, anytime I've used the CA glue, it's black. It's been some sort of rubbery and it has a weird. Yeah, I'm not a fan of the rubbery stuff. Yeah. I want the stuff that's like concrete when it's done the real strong shit. I've seen people use that and not have any trouble. Usually, usually it's gonna be better on a woofer that's like under a thousand watts. If you have something that's over a thousand watts, something that's really gonna push and pull, you want something stronger, the Starbond stuff works really well. Maybe at some point we might start selling glue. We do sell our epoxy, but it's quite expensive. It's like $15 a tube. And then you have to add shipping on top of that, so. And you have to get an epoxy gun. You still don't wanna use it on a spider. So might as well just get a, get a bottle. This is a one pound bottle. It costs $90 for this one bottle. But if you're doing it often and you can use this up before it kicks off, then you just saved a bunch of money. And you can get a ton of woofers out of this one bottle because you're just doing one or two beads on the spider. Yeah, we put ours in the fridge and we also put our accelerator in the fridge as well. So just be careful with that. Got our shim, you wanna put it in there? The guy up front with Brian is Trayton. Trayton is with Naples Premier Sound in Naples, Florida. He's not up there assisting Brian. He was a member of the audience randomly selected to not only get hands-on training, but he's gonna get to keep the sub that he recombed. Can you get your shim? You wanna get these down. They don't have to be to bare metal. We do suggest it, but as long as you have something for that glue to bite onto, you should be good to go. So landings are ready to go. Um, I already wiped these down with alcohol. These are good and clean and ready to go. So you should be good there. So let's go ahead and do a dry fit real quick. All right. Now, if you look, our woofers always have some type of notches in the surrounds <coughs> and they should always line up. You can see how there's a, there's your um, terminals right there. They should always line up in some form or fashion. So we, you're gonna drop it in. This is gonna be hard to do with the camera right here. 
I'm gonna take this out and do it like this. There we go. And you just wanna test fit it. Check this out. And I can't really show you on the camera, but you got your terminals right here. There's two sets. All, almost all of our woofers are dual voice coil. And here's a little trick. If you're not sure which one's positive and which one's negative, your left terminal is always gonna be uh, positive. I'll do mine, I'll bring it over to you, and you can do yours. On this surround light, or spider landing, there's actually holes, and the glue is going to drip down. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna get some paper towels. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna lay our, we're gonna lay our bead down. You don't wanna be too, th too thick or too thin. I usually do two passes of, like a, of a fairly thin bead. If I can get it on the camera good enough here. You don't want to be too slow about it because the stuff does dry pretty fast. You can either put the shim in first or put it on this. But since my camera is kind of in the way, I'm going to put the shim in the unit here. And don't go, you don't, you don't want to press it all the way down until you know you're lined up. So these holes, they're most, they're most important. All good. I'm gonna press down. Make sure our shim's down all the way. Press down. <coughs> and there we go. So I use a generous amount of accelerator. This stuff's cheap. Unlike the glue, the accelerator is cheap. Use as much as you want. Depending on the actual CA glue that you're using, you might find that it'll make it white when you hit it. Too um, much accelerator. And that's usually because they're using too much alcohol or too much acetone or too much this or too much that. There's like, there's like five different ingredients just in here. It's like, so are you ready? Yes, sir. All right, go ahead. If you mess this part up, it ruins the whole woofer. Thank you for that. No idea. pressure. <laughs> yeah, no pressure. You want to do one more run. Spin in and go. I'll take that. Thank you. Put your shim in. Alright. Line up, make sure it's lined up with your terminals. There you go. And line up your holes. Push that down. Push down the center. When you're looking at this, you want to make sure it's not doing one of these things right here. Because if you push down, it will it will come up a little bit. You just want to make sure there's like a medium pressure on that and make sure it's straight all the way around. Sometimes you might find that you may have to just stick your finger to push that down and then hit it with your accelerator. It'll be good to go. So much out here, accelerate that now? Yep, you want to accelerate the, uh, right here just, Two or three sprays and just in every hole, just kind of get it all the way around. One thing I was going to, when, when I watched him do it, I, when you do this so long, you kind of forget there's a rhythm to things. When I'm putting my accelerator down, or when I'm putting my CA glue down, or any glue usually, I'll keep one hand stationary. And I spin, because I'm using a, a laden Susan, I'm using this hand to spin everything. And it keeps everything in a kind of uniform look. Um, it takes a while to kind of learn that trick. But that's, that's kind of how you do it. I watched you, you, you kind of went around with the glue. If you just keep everything straight with one hand and use this. Your lazy Susan is your best tool. I totally forgot, we sell these by the way. Like 30 bucks. We have a ton of them. I need you all to buy one. <laughs> all right, how's it look? Let's take a look. Feel it, it feels dry. All right, you did good, man. Appreciate it. Good job. All right, so we're gonna move on to the terminals. This is the boring part. Nobody wants to watch us do it, but we gotta do it. Take your little tool there. Now there's a couple ways you can do terminals. 
I, the reason why I'm showing, the reason why I'm doing a 15 inch is the 15 inch models on all of our woofers, the terminals are in the open between the spokes and you can easily see and do the job. Take this little guy, you got your screws, dump them out right here. I always leave one extra in there for good luck, just in case we lose one. Do your eco kits have, like, are there eyelets on the end of the, the, the tinsel leads? Yes, they're soldered already for you. That's awesome. When you're putting these on, there's no real good, you know, one way or the other. What I like to do is, I can't show you on the camera, but I'll put these, this, instead of going in a 90 degree, I'll do, I'll kick it to a 45. So that way, when the, when the spider's moving up and down, it doesn't normally touch the, 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 the terminal. It'll come out this way, and it'll be kind of out of the way. So you wanna come down here, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Instead of it going straight like this, I'm gonna put it on a bit of a 45. Sometimes it's easier to start it with your hands. I want to take a second to thank Brian for letting me film his session. He hosted several of these how to recon a subwoofer sessions at Knowledge Fest. I'll be sure to give you a link to some of his videos down in the video description. While I'm thanking people, I want to say thanks to all of my patrons over on Patreon. I couldn't afford to travel to these kind of events without their financial support. And as always, I want to give a big bonus shout out to $25 and up patrons. Johnny, Timothy, Paul, Jonathan, JD America, and both. This is so tedious, this part. Now these surrounds, I'm pretty sure it's not going to stay up. Yeah, it's not going to stay up. The Mega Roll Woofers, they'll flip up and stay up. Um, standard rolls are not going to do that in most cases. This stuff is cheap and it works amazing. It's kind of pointless to use a two-part epoxy unless you do a production run. Um, this stuff takes a day at least 24 hours to, to pull to dry before you can use it. When I put this down, let me show you here. I'm going to keep the tip of this. I'm, I'm not using an actual tip that screws on. I'm just going to use the hole itself. I'm going to keep it flat and flush, and you can't really see. And I'm going to just squeeze a little bit. You don't want too much or too little. You'll kind of get a feel for it. But you're just going to run this flat, and you're going to, with these, you have to pull up the surround every time you do it. But you're going to keep it flat the whole way. And it's going to leave a nice flat bead. That way, not too much pushes out or comes up or makes it look weird. It's going to come out the holes, that's okay. Um, when it dries, you can just peel it off. Peel out the hole, or you take a knife and kind of cut it out, that's totally fine. So, I'm going to have you watch me do this. I understand if you get it on the surround. Everybody does, okay? <laughs> it's gonna get all over your hands. It's gonna be real fun. Oh, by the way, if you do get it on the woofer itself, don't touch it. Let it dry, or let it get almost dry, it'll peel right off. So I'm gonna take that. I feel like you need another set of hands to turn it. Right. <laughs> So all of our subwoofers now, well not all of them, all the 3 inch coil drivers and 2.75 coil drivers come with metal gaskets now. You don't have to worry about the rubber ones. Rubber ones are easier to work with, but they may not clamp down as good. You gonna give it a shot? This takes longer because a rubber one, you're just gonna throw it under and you're good to go. These, you put it on there, and now I've got eight screws I gotta put on. I would have assumed that the rubber wouldn't hold enough pressure to hold the glue down. The rubber really, the, the, a fresh one does a really good job of holding that in, but we had people blowing out surrounds that were using their woofers well past mechanical limits, which you know most of our customers do. So we just wanted that another added, added security. Where'd your gasket go? Oh, it's over there. How you looking? Yeah, that's good. Not too much, not too little, just right. You good? Did you get any on the surround? No, you're good, you're not you guys to see that. All right, so grab your gasket. Now these gaskets, these gaskets, they have two different types of holes. You've got your mounting hole, which goes to the big hole that's on here. That's, that's the one that, where your screw goes through into the enclosure. You got the smaller ones, which are, they just go from here to the frame itself. So 
Big hole, little hole. Big hole, little hole. We're gonna line them up. Unfortunately, one of my cameras crapped out about this point, but I did get some awesome time-lapse footage of these next two steps, which involve installing the metal gasket and gluing on the dust cap. That metal gasket not only serves as a mechanical fastener, but also holds the surround down while the adhesive dries. I'm Justin, this is the DIY Audio Guy YouTube channel, and I will see you on the next adventure.